Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That So Po, and today I am doing the 10 year challenge book tag. This was created by Rincy at Rincy Reads, and I was tagged by Cousin at Always Doing, both of whom I will link below. Um, this tag takes a look at your reading now versus a decade ago. Originally, Rincy had created this looking at 2019 versus 2009, but I am a little late doing this tag, so I have altered the question so that it's 2020 versus 2010. Um, so I'll just take a look at what my reading is like now versus what it was a decade ago, and it's actually quite different. So let's get on to the prompts. Number one, what was your favorite book in 2010? In 2010, I was reading a lot of romance novels, and in particular, I loved Georgette Heyer. So I think probably my favorite book from this period would be Frederica by Georgette Heyer. This is kind of a comedy of errors, very cute, silly, sweet romance in the, actually I think this might have been a little bit later than the Regency, maybe more in the Victorian era, looking at a woman, Frederica, who is responsible for a lot of younger siblings and comes to London to try to get a distant cousin's help um, in setting her family out into society. Uh, she definitely is not thinking about herself, but this distant cousin starts to think about her. It's really sweet and really fun. Number two, what is your favorite book of 2020? So obviously we've just gotten started in the year, but so far my favorite book, which is likely to make my favorites list at the end of the year, is Ghost by Jason Reynolds. This is a middle grade contemporary looking at a boy who is dealing with a lot of problems in his life, a lot of issues of poverty and of having a trauma due to kind of a previously violent father who is now in jail. Uh, and he joins a track team where he finds sort of a way to empower himself and find motivation and meaning in life. And it's just so powerful, so sweet, and so well written. Number three, what was your least favorite book in 2010? So for this, another Georgette Heyer actually makes the list. This is A Civil Contract by Georgette Heyer. Although this was a historical romance, it did not follow the most important rule of romances, which is a happily ever after. This story is about um, a man who's in the military who comes back home and discovers that he has inherited an estate, but it's in very poor condition and he really needs a lot of money. So he decides he has to marry an heiress, but he's in love with a very pretty woman who has no money. And so it, it kind of breaks his heart to have to do that, to have to give up this lady in order to marry an heiress. The heiress that he ends up marrying is a very mousy, quiet, reserved person who, you know, he's okay with marrying because he needs the money, um, but doesn't really care about. And over the course of the book, he sort of realizes that the pretty girl he was originally in love with was kind of shallow and didn't really matter but he never actually comes to love the woman he married. He more just becomes okay with her and he respects her and uh, appreciates her, but doesn't really love her. And I found that book so unsatisfying. I really did not like it. Um, maybe if it was something that I wasn't going into for the romance, it could have been a very good story, but since that was what I was looking for, it did not work for me. Question four, what was your least favorite book in 2020? So although 2020 has just started, I do have a couple of books that are maybe not my favorites. I tend to DNF books that I don't like. Um, so I've DNF'd a couple already and I don't really like to talk about those since I haven't finished them. So it's hard to actually rate or, or really evaluate. But of the books that I have finished, I would say probably my least favorite is Courtney Crumrin, Volume 1 by Ted Nyfa. And this is not a bad book, it just didn't work for me. Um, it is a middle grade graphic novel about a, a little girl, Courtney, who moves in with her parents to her uncle's very creepy mansion and discovers that there's a lot of magical, mystical beings around, the goblins and things like that, and discovers that she can also do magic um, but she's kind of mean and does a lot of mean magic that hurts a lot of people around her and takes pleasure in that so that meanness kind of didn't work for me and the art style wasn't also my favorite even though I did love the colors question five what was a book published in 2010 that you still want to read 
So a book published in 2010 that I would very much like to read is The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks by Rebecca Skloot. Now this is something that I had never heard of in 2010, but I have heard of through BookTube in the last couple of years and it sounds amazing. It's a nonfiction about the way that Henrietta Lacks cells were used in medical research without her consent for years and years and years. And a lot of great medical discoveries were made because of that, but not with her consent. And so that's a really fascinating nonfiction that I'd love to pick up. Number six, what's a book published in 2020 that you want to get to before the end of the year? So we're not very far into 2020 yet, but there are already books that have been released that I want to read and I haven't gotten to yet. Top of this list is Come Tumbling Down by Seanan McGuire, which is the fifth book in the Wayward Children series. I read all of this series last year and I really, really enjoyed it. This is a continuation of Jack and Jill's story. I really liked their stories, especially in Down Among the Sticks and Bones. So I very much want to get to this. What is a genre that you used to read a lot of that you don't read very much of anymore? So for this, back in 2010, almost everything that I was reading was romance. I was reading historical romance and I was reading paranormal romance. So for example, for paranormal romance, uh, the Sookie Stackhouse series by Charlene Harris. For historical romance, things like the Bedouin Saga series by Mary Ballow. Uh, I was all about romance and that was probably like 95% of what I read with some manga thrown in here and there. I have not read um, as much romance in the past couple of years, which is good because I needed to branch out and read other things. Uh, and what I am picking up now is a lot more of the radical romance, things where it's romance that addresses interesting social issues rather than just purely paranormal or historical. Question eight, what's a new genre that you've discovered since 2010? So for me, this is basically everything. Everything that isn't SFF, romance, or manga is new to me. Um, only in the past few years have I started reading things like literary fiction or um, historical nonfiction or things like social justice or comedy or poetry or novels and verse. I mean, really, everything that's not SFF, romance, or manga is new to me. Question nine, what's a reading or book habit that you're hoping to leave behind in this past decade? I think the habit that I have already started to leave behind, but I really do want to firmly leave it behind, is only reading comfort reads. For such a long time, the only books that I would pick up would be books that were just comforting, romances and fantasy books, things that were enjoyable escapism, but didn't really challenge me beyond that. And I think that that is definitely something that has its place, but I don't want that to be the only thing that I read. And I loved the past couple of years where I've really expanded my reading and challenged myself to read a lot of other things and grow as a reader and as a person. So I want to make sure that that's a part of my reading as well going forward. Number 10, what's a new reading goal or habit you want to create in the upcoming decade? So my biggest goal for the next decade is to make sure that I'm hearing more voices and reading more from underrepresented groups. I've done a lot in the past year or two to do this, and I really want to amp it up for the next decade and make sure that that is a huge focus of mine. And I'm getting a lot read by people who maybe I would not have heard from otherwise. I'm super excited about this goal. Okay, so those are all of the prompts for the 10 year challenge book tag. I will also include a picture of me and Sush from 10 years ago. 2010 is actually when we met, so it's always fun to see kind of what people were like 10 years ago. Uh, I don't know that we're all that much different, but especially since the 10 year challenge, I think started with people looking at pictures of themselves from 10 years ago, that's a fun thing to do. Uh, I would like to tag a couple of the other people to do this video. The people who I wanna tag are people who I think are very likely to have kept track of what they were reading 10 years ago, because that is the big challenge, right? Uh, first is Rachel at Colonati. I am positive that Rachel was tracking her reading 10 years ago. So Rachel, if you're interested, I'd love to see you do this tag. And the other person is Joe from Final Blow Joe. I think Joe was probably tracking his reading 10 years ago as well. So if you're interested, Joe, go ahead and do it. Also, if anybody else is interested in doing this tag, please do it. Let me know down below that you did it. I'd love to see you kind of reflecting on what those differences are between your reading tastes and styles back then versus now. Or if you want to just let me know in the comments below what you were reading, I'd be really interested. So go ahead, leave me a comment. 